this document. Okay, either way, there's this now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there's this document. Okay, at NASA, and NASA is not who they say they are. NASA says they're spraying lithium over Portland to test the air over Portland to see the jet stream and the atmosphere conditions over a major city. Okay, they could do that over the ocean. I'm sorry. Okay, so NASA, go back one time, please. So NASA has come out with this document, okay? It was toasted on the intranet instead of the intranet. It was a goof, okay? And I could go into this paper all day long, okay? It's a long, 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 very complex document, okay? But it is, it's got NASA's name all over it, and its legitimacy seems to be accurate. But it talks about humans, and, and um, it's, it's a very negative, very dark document. But I pulled, let's go to the next one. I pulled one slide out of this document. Very odd leaked NASA document, and it talks about, I mean, it talks about a mechanical micro dust, which is distributed as an aerosol, inhaled into the lungs, mechanically bores into your lungs, and executes various pathological missions, okay? This crazy futuristic idea of weaponry that they have for 2025, if you go back, they say 2020, 20, 2025, okay? The future is now. Yeah, go back. This article is titled 2025, the future is now. It's okay, either way. Like they, they what they're trying to hit what they're what they're pushing is this new technology because post because post 9-11, we ended up with a military industrial complex with no checks, no balances, and an unlimited budget because of complete and total fear mongering. Okay? So so basically we've got NASA who can do whatever. Okay. okay, the future is now. Okay, the future is now, 2025. These projects are being worked on now. They're black ops, and it's, it's literally Tesla technology that they went black ops with a century ago. Okay, this stuff is beyond our comprehension because we're actually good people, and the people that are in charge may not be. Okay, let's check this, please. Okay, very odd thing. Yeah, it's very odd, but it has to be new change because it's, it's out there. Okay, so in 1995, when we saw the uptick, one more click, when we saw the uptick in a persistent linear cirrus cloud formations in North America, that, at that same time in 1996, sorry, this paper was released by the U.S. Air Force, claiming that they would own the weather by 2025 using weather as a force multiplier. Okay, weather as a weapon. Okay, if this was their desire in 1995, 1996, and this paper is going public, then imagine what their Hey, Carla! Hey, then imagine what their plan actually could potentially be. Here we are, 20 years from then. 20 years at the, at the exponential rate that technology advances on the government. Okay, we get the government's technology 10 years post. Okay? They're running with these black ops projects that are funded by black ops. Like, I mean, it's, it's total black ops fear mongering, like crazy space projects that we are not even in the in the know about whatsoever. So either way, they want to own the weather. Okay, we get it. Next one. Okay, so here's an example. The president of Iran, okay, this is a YouTube clip. The president of Iran spoke out and said, look, I got an informant from Europe that told me that Europe was stealing my reign before it got to my country. I laughed at him. They cannot steal my reign, he says, right? But I looked into it because I've got, because I'm Iran. He, it's, Iran, as much fear, as much BS that gets told about Iran, they're a major country, okay? They're not what the media tells us. They're, uh, uh, they're, they could have nukes, you know? They have technology. They're, I mean, this guy, he's been demonized, but he's actually really in the know. He talks out about 9-11 and stuff like that. I don't want to say he's a good guy because I don't really know anything, I mean, about him enough. But uh, what I do know is he had his research look, researchers looked into it, and he said that the jet stream coming off the Mediterranean was been hit with dispersants, Metallic dispersants, preventing the rain from falling in his country, okay? So, I mean, if we had weather as a weapon, hit it one more time. Oh, it works! Cool! Okay, so if we had weather as a weapon, then situations like this seem somewhat probable. So this is last year. This is Hurricane Joaquin, okay? And these, these conceptual ideas of weaponizing hurricanes, okay, and weaponizing these certain weather patterns have all just been conceptual, okay? But let me show you something that's never, ever, ever happened before in the history of weather recording, of, in the history of weather warfare. Okay, we've got Hurricane Joaquin. This hurricane is spinning, 
Okay, somehow it has what they termed a atmospheric fire hose. This is the first time this thing has ever existed. It gave thousand year catastrophic floods to, to South Carolina. The hurricane kept spinning. Okay, look at the arm. The hurricane keeps spinning. Where the, while the hurricane is spinning, the arm doesn't move. The arm is directionalized and it is targeting a, an area, okay? So there was a high and low pressure system, uh, the, two high pressures set up on each side and cornering this, the energy was just spinning out. Like, do you know how hurricanes work? The energy's in the eye. These things move around and they blast people. They don't have directional arms targeting civilian populations, okay? Like this was, okay, and I know I sound a little out there saying that this is a weaponized event. This is a weaponized hurricane. Like, I mean, where, where is this energy coming from? Like, do, do you see yeah. this? Mm -hmm. Like, come on. But I'm so stoked that that worked. All right, keep going. <laughs> so that's just, we're just touching on these things really quick. 1943, okay? Tesla had some serious information. He was like, downloading information from the ether, this out of this world technology. It was so advanced. He and Wilhelm Reich, okay? Yeah. Wilhelm Reich also had this amazing yeah. technology. Wilhelm Reich was jailed and he didn't make it out of jail alive by the FDA, okay? But he had this incredible technology about um, harnessing of organ energy and how, and his technology has led to the development of these things called organ generators and the harnessing of etheric energy. And what I've come to realize through Scott Stevens and Harry Rhodes, who is, Harry Rhodes in, is in UK, and I'm gonna be flying Harry Rhodes out, and we're gonna be coming up here on our way to the Vancouver Summit in May. So I'm stopping through Ashland because I wanna raise some people's awareness, and I want, to show that we're going to be building these cloud busters and we're going to be putting, they're called cloud busters, I'm sorry for the term, we're going to be putting them up around the Pacific Northwest. I'm looking for people who will host them on their property. You can put them underground. But these things, they clear the skies, okay? Basically, organ energy, this Tesla technology, is being used to suspend these particles in the atmosphere, okay? They lay out an organic, etheric, energetic uh, field. Then they lay out the nano dust, and then it can suspend, and it can come down, and we can breathe it in, okay? Because of Tesla's, I mean, like, that's as much as I can explain because I'm not Tesla. But either way, we have the ability, we have the modern day Wilhelm Reich, okay? Harry Rhodes, and I'm going to bring him here. Yeah. And, and we're going to build these things. We're going to set them up in a perfect little formation. I don't think anybody in here is fed, right? Not yet. So, um, don't tell anybody, right? <laughs> Next. I'm serious, really. <laughs> so Tesla, right? So let's just talk about this guy. He had the ability to, to, to mess with the climate and to mess with the weather. He, like if you tear through here, his information basically was the precursor foundation to this electromagnetic frequency wave distribution and weather modification programs that are ongoing today, okay? His, his papers got confiscated by the government and they reverse engineered and ran with everything they could and it went black ops and they didn't use it for the good of the population. All right? Cool, we're gonna give you some time to, okay. Kim Trails and Hart, all right. So what they do, they lay out these metal, metallic dispersers. I mean, look at the, the, this is a plane just like straight turning over this person's house. But either way, so we've got these layout of metallic dispersants, okay? They dissipate into a haze and then a heart frequency wave is put through it, okay? So then you get these ripples. Okay, these ripples are an electromagnetic frequency next, please. Okay, this is hard. Okay, this is in Alaska. There's multiple of these now all over the planet, but this is a high frequency array antenna that's used to heat the ionosphere. To, to, the, the original reason this thing was developed is to, so you have your atmosphere, okay? If you can heat the atmosphere and push up a bubble of the atmosphere, then an enemy satellite coming by will hit that bubble of the atmosphere and totally get destroyed. That's where the original technology came from, but then they ran with it, okay? And now they can heat the atmosphere over here and create these high pressure systems. If you have the heated ionosphere, the air will rise and you've created a high pressure system. You can do that anywhere. You can heat the ionosphere over Iran and make it record temperatures, okay? That happened last year. Next, please. So, HARP is not a theory, okay? It's on the History Channel. You've got this, this, High frequency auroral array program, these they shoot this I mean like I don't know, it's crazy heart. It's crazy technology, right? So global so here's what they do. Say they wanna say so say so these mirrors are really metallic dust. They put the uh, metallic dust in the atmosphere, they've got one station putting it up and bouncing it back, and then they can basically 
the more metallic dust that they have, the lower they can bounce it. The lower the metallic dust, the more we get this frequency waves pulsing through us. Okay? And then in the end game, maybe their diabolical scheme is to have this really cranking through us. And to, I mean, like, you know, the, 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 the trajectory of the timeline that we're on, if we don't, like, you know, actually make a stand and do something, they're just going to run with this technology, and it, it could literally mean flipping some switch and having this frequency wave pulse through us and brainwash us, but we don't even want to let them get there, is what I mean, you know what I mean? And I don't want to be fear-mongering, I'm just saying the technology is leading in a really weird direction. So, one more. So you end up with these hole punches in the sky, all right? And then of course NASA will come out and give you some little phenomenon for this. But what we see here, this is metallic dust, okay? This is a combination of a plethora of metallic dust and different chemicals to give the illusion of white. Okay, we're not seeing white clouds, we're not seeing water vapor, we're seeing a concoction of chemicals to see the illusion of white. They're actually tricking our mind into thinking we're seeing clouds. Here, the heart frequency wave have busted through this, and because there's not that perfect, um, that perfect uh, uh, chemical composition of all the different chemicals, you're seeing not the like 24 pattern, 24 chemical composition or whatever they have to make this perfect illusion of white. Of white. Now that it's messed up, you see these true colors, like um, these different colors represent different chemicals, okay? This is a heart um, frequency, like, so go one more. I think I've got a good example. Did it? Did it one more time, please? Oh, okay, no, I talked about it. So either way, um, we can directly control the entire mental system of humankind. Mm. Okay, this is a guy in the 40s, and he has incredible technology, and the U.S. government took this and ran with it, and they have horrible intentions, like, what is going on next, please? So these, these bursts you see in the clouds are from this harnessed energy, you know what I mean? You see how this can tear through a cloud. And then there's these ley lines going all, these, these energetic ley lines around the planet. And heart can actually run along these ley lines as long as the metallic dust is in the atmosphere. And then they end up being able to keep the current all around the planet. But what ended up, what ended up happening is they found it easier to just build a bunch of these all over the planet. Now there's 12 of them all over the place. But we've got um, Martin Sheen. He's awake to it, he's reaching out. We've got like, like literally your voice is your weapon. Did I say that? Oh, knowledge of power, your voice is your weapon. I got cut off. But he's like, like your voice is your weapon. People speak out against it. Like the more that you know, the more in power that you are. And then these, these things like heart and this crazy technology doesn't seem so foreign to you and you can actually convey the message and, mix, and like help spread the word because it's actually something that needs to be addressed, okay? So David Keith and the media and Al Gore. So David Keith, is another scientist that's in Al Gore's court, and basically he says that instead of having a trillion dollars per year to save ourselves from ourselves, we can spend seven hundred million dollars a year putting, um, imitating volcanic eruptions, putting metallic dust in the atmosphere, reflecting the sun, saving ourselves from the sun because we need to save ourselves from ourselves. So this David Keith guy is totally bogus and so that work. Next, please. Okay, so the patents tell a story. We're going to tear through these. There's a lot. Okay, so basically, this is a patent from 1974. Rockets have a barium release system to create ion clouds in the upper atmosphere. So it's, it's barium, strontium, and aluminum. Those are the primary dispersants used in the Pacific Northwest to create the drought, okay? Now, I know it feels like it's raining now, but as long as you pre keep the nights warm by, by encompassing in the warm air with these chemtrails at night, okay, because oftentimes we even have temperatures rising overnight, or we have predictions of two feet of snow, where are we at, Donna? Where are we at, Donna? Yeah, two feet of snow predicted in Klamath Falls and then zero get last night, right? You get these anomalies because these chemicals are being used in the atmosphere. As long as we don't get our snowpack, come summer, the drought is going to be significant because they have ways of making the drought even worse. But okay, 74, they're already figuring out how to make clouds out of bearing. Next, please. 75, we've got powder contrail generation. Next, please. 91. We've got electromag I'll put this in here. electromagnetic radiation, creation of artificial ionization clouds above the Earth, 1991. Next, please. We got stratospheric seeding for the reduction of global warming. It's okay. Yep, stratospheric, one technique proposed is to add tiny particles to the fuel of jet airliners so that particles would be emitted from the jet engine exhaust while the airliner was at cruising altitude. Stratospheric seeding, okay, 2009. Aluminum tolerant genetics. What? Monsanto has all the rights to aluminum um, tolerant genetics. Monsanto bought Climate Corporation for a billion dollars two years ago. Monsanto is just is all about the aluminum because if all the plants die, all their things work. The aluminum is in the vaccines. We don't need to go there right now. The aluminum is in the air too. Keep going. Vaccines are bad. So 
Enhanced aerial delivery systems of large quantities of fluids and powders. Guess what? They're still cranking out the patents because they're behind the scenes making sure that their competition can't do what they're doing. Like, I mean, the, the patents tell the story. Like, if, if, if they're putting in the research and coming out with the patents, then, the, then they're coming out with the technology, too. I mean, like, the patents are there, and these are the things that are public sector that we can actually get our hands on and think, like, okay, there's lines in the sky, it's not raining, the, the, the frogs are outside my house, and the 3,000-year-old the redwoods are expecting the rain, but we've got, you know what I mean, you can see it, it's unfolding, the story's there. Next, please. Patents, 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 patents. Next, please. Liquid atomizing um, from spraying method of producing cumulus clouds, even. Centrifugal aerosols, stratospheric seeding for reduction of global warming. Next, please. Maybe I should have one earlier. Ongoing societal conditioning. Okay, so here's where it gets intense. Okay? You've got the youth being targeted into thinking it's normal. Okay? They went and digitally remastered, remastered the movie Jaws and put in chemtrails in the movie Jaws. Okay, so you look and you're like, oh no, it's been there the whole time. Let's just run through this. This is really just really cool. So you connect the dots, okay? We got chemtrails in everywhere you look. They're in the ads, they're in the, they're in the cartoons. It's being completely normalized via Hollywood to think that this is something that we've already always seen and nothing to think about, okay? When, you, when I do my grassroots activism on the streets, I'm asking people, do you know about these lines in the sky? And they say, yeah, they've been there the whole time. It's nothing to think about. It's just jet exhaust. And there, there's really... It's, it's really a subtle uh, brainwashing thing that goes on. So you've got Bloomberg, geoengineering, the bad idea. We need, um, they're, they're basically any news that talks about it, whether they're saying, hey, it's a good idea, or maybe it's a bad idea, maybe we need it, we definitely need something to, to save ourselves, provides a shock of fresh air to the climate debate in the US. This geoengineering, posing geoengineering as a solution, let's go to the next, has been actually, okay, so that, it's okay, it's okay.